Hi, my name is here. Welcome back to another episode of the Dig Deep, the Mining Podcast. And today's uh, guest is Nicholas Kakos, who's the President, Director and CEO of Argentine Lithium and Energy Corp, who are focused on acquiring high quality lithium projects in Argentina and advancing them towards production in order to meet the growing global demand in the battery sector. Uh, Nicholas has a wealth of experience um, in executive level management uh, and advisory expertise in the mineral exploration industry and serves as an officer and director on a number of TSX venture exchange listed companies. Um, it's going to talk about um, Argentine lithium, what they've been up to um, and, and more. So that's welcome Nicholas to the podcast. How are you doing Nicholas? Hello, good day. I'm doing very well. It's a pleasure to be on the program. No, and I appreciate your time. So, um, wondered if you, how we always start, obviously, these podcasts off. I wondered if you can give, tell us a little bit about yourself, about your career, what you've been doing um, up to sort of present day. Yep. Well, uh, for the last 30 years, I've been in the mining industry. Uh, and I'm still actually with my very first job <laughs> here with uh, the, the Grosso Group, which is the, the management company that runs uh, uh, Argentina Lithium and Energy. And uh, way back in 1993 is when we began. And uh, th I had just come out of school. I have a, a business uh, background. I've got a bachelor's in science from the University of British Columbia. And I have a, a master's in business from uh, Heidelberg, Germany, uh, of all places. So... Uh, then I've come back and uh, we've been in the mining business ever since uh, then and uh, specifically in Argentina. Um, in joining with the Grosso Group, I think it, we were able to uncover uh, that Argentina presented a very unique um, uh, mining opportunity that you don't come across maybe once in a lifetime, if that. what Here you had a country that was or still is rather the eighth largest country by landmass in the world and had virtually a no mining exploration no mining industry to speak of it was all run by the national government private investment was prohibited and then over on you look at the chilean side which is a small strip they had a, a very highly developed and sophisticated mining industry and the government has was earning very significant revenues from 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 mining so back in 92, uh, 93, Argentina decided, well, this is a time for us to change. So they changed their liberalized their laws, allowing for private investment. And Joe Grosso, uh, at that time, who had family in Argentina, recognized this opportunity. And uh, we became basically the first pioneers in the mining industry in Argentina back in 90, 93. We were, I think, the seventh official company to be registered there. So a uh, uh, plethora of opportunities arose and then since that time we got busy with different mining ventures and i'm proud to say that grosser group has been behind making set uh four major uranium four major uh world-class discoveries uh discovered uh the guacamayo gold mine which is still in production today uh discovered the uh Chinchillas silver lead zinc mine, which uh, our sister company was able to partner up with a major SSR mining from and take it all the way into production. Um, discovered the Navidad silver deposit, which even today ranks as the world's largest undeveloped silver deposit. And even a new uranium vanadium discovery uh, in Southern Argentina, uh, the first of its kind there, uh, which has got world-class potential. So seeing the opportunities being presented with underinvestment in Argentina. We felt, you know, in the last few years, as the price of lithium was beginning to firm up, maybe now is the time to look in that space and uh, make a few, one or more discoveries in, in, in that metal. Yeah. Before we uh, obviously start um, talking about Argentina as a, as a mining jurisdiction, just wonder if you can just tell us um, a little bit, a little bit about Argentine lithium, um, a little bit about the company. Um, and probably some of the goals of the company. Well, yes, uh, Arg Argentina Lithium, uh, we got started uh, in the, back in 2013, 2014. Um, we started picking up some projects and then the price of lithium uh, petered off. So we started to slow down uh, to preserve capital at that time. 
And then the pandemic hit. And with the pandemic, the restrictions in Argentina were very uh, restrictive. In fact, even mobility within provinces was not permitted. But for us, for Argentina Lithium, we saw opportunity in these restrictions because we had a significant staffing there uh, in, you know, through our, our Grossa Group presence. And there was no competition in terms of picking up lithium projects at that time because no one could come in and evaluate them and look at them, whereas we could do that. And that's exactly what we did. We started a couple of years ago uh, acquiring high quality projects. And as the price of lithium was beginning to firm up, uh, because you know it's uh, it, the demand for it, especially in electro vehicle uh, batteries uh, components, has been recently been exploding. So the demand for lithium has been really going up. And we've been able to acquire since then four very high quality projects and some of the most uh, prospective uh, Solars or you know Salt Lake brines uh, as they're known in Argentina and uh, in some of the best places and uh, we've just recently started working on them and uh, so our our goal is to continue to solidify our our, our, our ground presence there and then advance each of these uh, property packages into the drilling stage where we can identify and discover lithium and then begin to move that towards uh, defining a, a certain resource a feasibility study and then ultimately into production. Um, you've recently made a, a new acquisition. I just wonder if you can just tell us and um, the audience a little bit about that. Yes, um, we made an acquisition recently. It was part of the, our flagship project, the Recon West project. And uh, this Salt Lake uh, is actually a very, very high profile one. It was just a few months ago that Rio Tinto, the, one of the world's largest mining companies, they paid $825 million to be positioned in, in this Solar. And then subsequent to that, they made an announcement that they have teamed up with Ford Motor Company to be able to supply them with lithium that comes from this Solar. So this is a Solar that has a very large company presence there, and there we know that there's lithium there. There's another Australian company there that has also defined uh, a deposit there and is also moving towards production. And these are the kind of projects that we've been able to accumulate. Uh, and then recently, the government listed for uh, public bidding uh, a, a very prospective piece of property that was uh, contiguous with ours and contiguous also with uh, uh, Rio Tinto's land. And we were successful in acquiring that in the summer. So we paid two and a half million dollars to acquire that. It's now part of our package, and uh, you know, with the drill program that's ongoing, we've uh, we've already announced our first hole, and we have discovered the presence of lithium at uh, grades that are very comparable to both our neighbors, Argosy Minerals and uh, Rio Tintos. And we have an ongoing drill program, and as uh, if we continue to get these kinds of results, and I think we're going to be sitting in a very very uh, secure position, and uh, our, our shareholders will be very very happy. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Um, I just wonder if you can just tell us a little bit about the, the drill program. Well, the drill program at, uh, is, is a nine hole program. Uh, we're permitted for nine. We intend to drill anywhere between five to seven drill holes, I think. And as we've, I believe we've completed drill hole number five now and a couple more holes to do. We expect to complete that probably by the end of next month, end of October. And then after that, uh, you know, results pending, of course, our goal is to be able to move towards a resource definition, which we could have probably by first quarter of 2023. And then after that, move towards pre-feasibility study. So, and what's been the real game changer here with lithium uh, solars is that now in the past, uh, the way the lithium was extracted, that these, you know, the, the lake, these, um, uh, these liquids and these resources were laid out on big flats and allowed to evaporate and to extract the lithium there. And that had all kinds of uh, costly uh, processes involved. It took a long time. It was expensive. And depending on the chemical composition that was in each particular salt lake, uh, it was feasible or not feasible. And you needed a really high grade of lithium to make that work. Well, the last few years we've seen uh, the emergence of what's called direct lithium extraction technologies. And these are like, they work like with osmosis. 
Uh, there are chemical ways of actually just attaching and removing the lithium. And they can, some of these are extremely effective, removing up to 95% plus of all the lithium from the brine. And they can work at grades that go down to as low as 90 uh, milligrams per liter. So they can make all, so make everything, most of the, the salt lakes here really quite productive. So as this technology also continues to advance, I think this is uh, giving our Argentina lithium a very unique opportunity to not just make a new lithium discovery, but to be able to uh, extract it in the future in a relatively economic way. Yeah. Wanted to just tell us a little bit about mining in Argentina. Obviously, you mentioned that you're the, the first company, first company back 30 years ago. Um, how the mining industry sort of, I suppose, developed over that time from when you first I suppose entered the country to what it is now, and and I suppose what what improvements do you see for the future in in terms of mining in uh, Argentina? And obviously, you probably don't want to give away all, all your secrets, but <laughs> just wanted to, I just wanted to see, just want to know, and I suppose the audience would do how how the industry has developed in the country. Um, mining was really quite something else. Uh, you know, back in 93, when we got going and we were the seventh company to get incorporated at that time, um, was virtually unknown. Everybody were, were there were either uh, gauchos or farmers or in agriculture. That's really where, where the main industry uh, was. But we worked closely with all levels of government. We made a, a significant contribution to help them uh, devise and uh, put together uh, mining regulations and mining laws. So, and since then, Argentina has actually come quite a long way. They have a very sophisticated, they've become quite sophisticated in, in terms of regulation. It's all very provincially run, uh, not too indifferent than the way things are done in Canada. In fact, the, the resources belong to the province. So there are some differences from one province to the other, but in general, things have been really quite good. But it's still very much quite undeveloped, especially when you compare to other peer uh, countries like Chile. Um, there's been a lot of new discoveries in Argentina. And I think uh, from an economic point of view, Argentina, uh, you know, is constantly in need of, of revenues uh, for government revenues. And I think and I, what we've seen over the last three decades is you know, as governments come and go, both left wing and right wing, centrist, whatever stripe they may be, there's one consistent theme that we've always seen is their uh, strong support for mining. And that's because they see that the potential revenues that can be generated for the government. So we've seen that support there. And specifically for lithium in northwestern Argentina, where the lithium triangle exists, and, and that's uh, that triangle uh, basically uh, defines a part of southern Bolivia, uh, eastern Chile, and western Argentina. About 60% of the world's lithium reserves are situated here, but Argentina is probably is the most underdeveloped. It. So the two provinces that are three provinces actually that are quite uh, that are prominent in this area again support uh, not just mining but support the development of lithium very strongly. So. Um, it's a it's a great place to be. It's a great place to meet new discoveries. There, it's rewarding not just uh, financially for shareholders, but as a, as the president of a of a company, I, I, I it's also rewarding uh, aesthetically in that making a discovery out of nothing is and creating jobs is uh, uh, for local people and revenues for locals and for government is a is a very satisfying uh, feat. Yeah. And what are the perceptions of, of the locals and Argentinian people? Um, obviously, some of them, I suppose, I suppose some of the um, uh, are stakeholders and I suppose the local communities that are near mine sites and obviously that obviously potentially benefit from that. What, what's the general feeling from from the Argentinian people, especially if they're if they haven't had mining on their doorstep and now they have? Yeah, do they, I mean, do they, under, do they understand mining? Main, most people in Argentina, simply because of the lack of history, don't understand mining. And we understood that early on, three decades ago, before uh, ESG or, you know, uh, became a catchphrase in terms of uh, having contact with locals and the stakeholders and whatnot. But so what we instituted as a Grasa group, very early on, we understood 
the power and the right of the local people, the, the, those who are most impacted to have a stake and a say in what is going to be developed, because ultimately they can open or shut the door uh, to any uh, project development. So we have a very, very strict uh, approach uh, in that before we get involved, before anybody gets onto the property, even just to go for a little walk, we ensure that we have our community relations specialists reach out, uh, speak with the communities, help them to understand who we are. We're not miners, we're explorers. And, and again, uh, gain their confidence. We act transparently. We work together with them to, uh, we try to get communities to be involved when we do environmental studies, water level testing studies, so that there's a participation and a transparency where we can gain their trust. And then afterwards, and we also, of course, are very careful to ensure that we employ as many people as possible from the local communities, especially those most impacted by it. And as we move forward, uh, when we transact, if we have to transact the project to someone else, we, we try to advocate on behalf of the community. So um, it's a very careful, painstaking approach, but it's a necessary one if uh, any project is going to see it's a, be able to move on and become successful. Yeah. So what's the uh, outlook, say, over the next six to 12 months, both from a uh, financial perspective and both from a uh, and from a uh, operational perspective? Well, I'm very optimistic. I'm optimistic. Um, stepping back, just looking at the price of lithium a few years ago, it was just a few thousand dollars a ton. It's over seventy thousand dollars a ton. Now, the price of lithium has gone through the roof and it continues to be going up high and sustainably uh, driven, of course, by electric vehicles, especially those electric vehicle battery needs in, in China. Uh, secondly, uh, with us, we've accumulated, we've completed pretty well the first uh, phase of our uh, company uh, objective in that we've been able to assemble four uh, excellent projects. And now we're at the phase where we're beginning to drill test these projects and to identify uh, lithium. With Rincon West, our flagship project, we've made a discovery of lithium already. And as we continue with our drilling, hopefully we'll be in a position where we can be uh, moving on to a resource calculation. So this is going to happen over the next uh, six months. This is extremely uh, exciting. And then after that, we will be looking to pairing up with the direct lithium extractor, setting up perhaps a pilot plant and testing uh, a pre-feasibility study to do some uh, early economic uh, understandings and studies to test the economics of a potential project here. So the next, I believe the next 12 months are, are going to be extremely formative for, for us. And uh, as we're sitting right now at a relatively sh small market cap, as we move through these, um, uh, these landmarks, I believe that, you know, we're going to see a, a significant revaluation of our company's market cap uh, by the market. Good. And lastly, just wonder if there was anything else that you want to uh, share with our audience who are all around the world. Um, is there any sort of last thoughts and maybe why um, people should look to invest, invest in you? Well, investing in, in, in a company like Argentina Lithium that has what really sets us apart from all the others is the, our history our 30 year history and uh, Grosser Group, basically the management team behind us, behind uh, this company. We understand how to work effectively there. We understand we have contacts at all levels of government from municipal, provincial and federal uh, throughout the mining industry. We have a very good understanding how to work with the local communities and ensure that a project moves on to success. It's one thing to make a discovery. It's another thing to be able to move it forward successfully. And we've been able to do that four times before already. And I believe with Argentina Lithium, we're going to do that with the Lithium Project, uh, hopefully more than once too. So this is, uh, like I stated earlier, it's a very exciting time for to to look at Argentina Lithium and uh, to consider involvement with it. Yeah. Nick, it's really appreciate your time in uh, sharing uh, the story and telling us about Argentina, the mining industry, and obviously Argentinian lithium. So uh, obviously wish you well in the future. If our audience wants to reach out to you, if they've got any questions, how can they go about doing that? Are you across any social media platforms? Yeah, we're all, all over the social media platform. Our website is a great resource. Uh, you can reach out to us. Uh, there's an email 
Uh, and then uh, you can either request to, you know, I'm happy to speak with people. We also have a very strong investor uh, communication program. Sean Perger is our, is our, is our chief there. And uh, we're ex extremely responsive and uh, always happy to speak with shareholders or potential shareholders. Yeah, great to hear. Um, well, thank you again for your time. Uh, those that are listening, I um, hope you enjoyed that episode. And obviously Argentina, I don't think, I'm not sure if we've had many uh, miners on from uh, that be mining in Argentina. So I think it's a first. So obviously have, have, a, have a look at um, Argentina Lithium. Um, reach out to Nicholas if you've got any questions. Um, please share this episode amongst others around the world. Um, obviously, lithium is needed for the battery revolution uh, that we're, we seem to be moving into. So really appreciate your time. Thank you for listening. And until next Thank time, you. happy mining.